Hi, everybody. I am Rick DiClemente. This is Astrology Unplugged. It's good to have you with us tonight. Tonight, we're going to be reinvent, reinviting our friend, Deneen Joyner, who is a, a former Pittsburgh ancestral trauma expert. And now she's living out of use. And a couple of things I want to go over with you first. Um, I've been doing this quite a while, and I've decided uh, I'm going to move the hour up. Eight o'clock's become very hard for me. So I hope that it doesn't cause much trouble with all of you, but I'm moving it up to seven o'clock, seven to eight thirty from now on after tonight. I just decided to do so, and it might make things easier in a lot of ways. Um, unfortunately, Mr. John Hayes, our good friend, the lawyer, has a wife who's very, very ill and is asking for your prayers. And I don't know much detail, and I don't want to ask. She's in Pittsburgh. She's not doing well at all. And we ask you to come together and send her your vibes when you can. Uh, her name is Marilyn. Next week, we're on at 7. This is a two-week course. Janine decided to write a whole new course that would last two hours. And I didn't think she could fit it all in one show and have me transport that um, together in one lump over to YouTube. So she's going to do part one tonight. And after part one tonight, she'll do questions. And part two will be two weeks from tonight on um, November 30th. Okay, so everybody, welcome my guest, Deneen Joyner, who is now coming out of the state of Houston, Texas. And we get to talk to Deneen quite often. Welcome aboard. Thank you. How is everybody doing this evening? You can push I'm doing good, and you, uh, you guys can unmute yourself whenever you want to. It's up to you. Denise's here to talk to us about ancestral healing, the things that get passed down from one generation to the next. Yes, so, for sure. Why don't you give doing us a good little... when you can relax. You're always doing good when you can relax, right? And this is like relaxation time for us, but work time for you. So, but you love your work. <laughs> so what's going on, Deneen? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I guess uh, see if I can share my PowerPoint so we can go ahead and get started, if that's okay. okay. Let's see if it'll let me. You have the op you have the control. Yeah. There it says you Yeah. It looks like it's gonna let me. Yeah. Looks like it's loading up for me. There we go. It's small, but it's there. There it is. Okay. That's fine. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. All in the so, family. Yes, yes. The course is called All in the Family. An Introduction to Understanding Generational Curses. When I stumbled on this picture, I just, it made me pause. I was looking for a picture that would really speak to the course. And when I saw this, I just was in amazement. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is the picture I want to use. I mean, it doesn't get any more better than a, a baby and an elder literally breathing life into him. And that speaks volumes to generational curses and the conscious and unconscious that happens behind the scenes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I just wanted to share my thoughts about this picture because every time I see it, it just kind of makes me stop. So I have a little bit of house rules. They might be a little bit different than Rick's, but I just wanted to <laughs> Rick doesn't, have, here. Rick doesn't yeah. have any. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. So I wanted to put them up and only because because of the content and the subject matter. I felt like I needed to at least give some guidance uh, for want to assume. So it's always better for me to just kind of spell it out. So these are the rules of engagement for this evening. Please place yourself on mute unless asked to unmute yourself. This is a this is spiritual material. So you're you're literally going to put your thinking cap off. I really don't want you to think about the content. I want you to feel the content. So I'm literally asking you to open your heart and allow yourself to feel whatever comes up. So we're not going to think about anything. We're going to feel about everything. And then I want you to take notes. So if you don't have anything to take notes, you can get it now or you can use your phone, whatever you're comfortable using. But I want you to be able to take notes. Uh, anything that kind of just, you know, uh, makes you pause or or you, you it takes you somewhere, a memory. Just kind of jot it down for yourself so you can revisit it later on your own. This is a no judgment space. So please refrain from laughter or commenting on sensitive shares from others, unless of course the, the person is laughing. I always say if they're laughing first, then you can join in. Please feel free to share your experiences whenever asked and appropriate in the chat or if you're selected to share. I saw this quote and I said, yep, that's pretty much it. It says the degree to which a person can grow is directly proportional to the amount of truth they can accept about themselves without running away. So you're going to hear something tonight that is going to really make you reflect on it later on. I don't know what that something is, but I hope that you'll make a note of it. Because sometimes what happens when we are used to using um, defenses, defenses that we've developed over our lifetime to keep us disconnected from pain or a traumatic memory, we numb everything. And so what will happen is that your soul is going to lean into this information. And even if you're not really sure why you're feeling something, later on, I believe that if you allow yourself to go there, then it'll become clear to you. These are the course goals. And just like Rick said, we aren't going to get through the entire course this evening because it's in two parts. But this is our course goals in general. We're going to learn what generational curses are and how they're passed down. We're going to be able to identify your own family's generational curses. And then it's my hope that this will inspire curiosity moving forward. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is called spiritual inheritance. Spiritual inheritance is the passing down of ancestry, generational curses, which is what we'll be talking about this evening, family karma, soul wounds, emotional genealogy, and generational blessings. All of these things are inherited from your ancestors directly to your family and to you as a descendant. I'm going to talk to you about each of the inheritances, but then, of course, I'm going to focus more so on the generational curses. And I will be pausing. So if you have any questions and you want to just write them down for me or put them in a chat, you can do that as well. The first one is ancestry. Because of my work as an ancestral trauma expert, I'm always looking for the origin of something. So unlike traditional ancestry, where you're, you're looking at a heritage, you're looking at bloodline, ethnicity, and those things. When I think of ancestry as it relates to the work that I do, I'm looking at the root, the origin, 
the originality of emotions. So for purposes of this evening, we're looking at one's family or ethnic descent, the origin or background of something, which is the definition of ancestry. But like I'm speaking to you about, I want you to think about ancestry as the very beginning of your emotional framework for your family. So where did that begin? Most people don't really think about where it began. They just know of the family they grew up in. But I want to change that for you tonight. I really want you to become curious about all of the things that you were exposed to as a child within your family, your first family is what I call it. But I want you to think that it didn't start there. It started somewhere else. And I want you to start to really, really lean into possibly where that came from. Family karma is the manifestation of a family's generational curses within family members. Later on, we're going to talk about the DNA behind generational curses and how it's actually passed down to descendants, to a particular family system. And then, of course, to the descendants living within a particular family home. So when I speak of family karma, I'm talking about the actual passing down manifestation of it within a family's home. And each family member actually receives a part of the curse, if you will. And we'll talk more about what that looks like as well. Then there's soul wounds. Soul wounds is the individual manifestation and experiences of the generational curses for a specific family member. So we're talking about a generational curse that an ancestor carried, and then it was passed down to your family. And then from your family, because of the curse and because of the manifestation of it, then you would have soul wounds based on how your family reacted to the curses. So everybody, if you have siblings, everybody has a piece of the pie, so to speak. Everybody is going to respond differently to different curses. So nobody will have the same experience. It might be similar, but it won't be the same. The last two of the spiritual inheritance is emotional genealogy. Emotional genealogy really is a term that I made up. I haven't uncovered it anywhere else. I actually termed it this because in my work, again, I, I started to realize that similar to a family tree where you're actually looking at ancestors and descendants on the tree, and you're looking at their their birth date and in some instances their their death date as well you're able to see how the family just generationally started to grow in my work what i'm able to do is not only collect the names and the faces i'm also able to provide what i call emotional genealogy which is literally providing generational curses for a particular family lineage. And then I'm also able to break down what each family member inherited as it relates to soul wounds. So if you were to look at your family tree, just picture what you know present day. If you were to go back three generations, I really typically tell people they don't need to go back any further than three generations to really get a sense of where they came from emotionally. But if you wanna go further back, of course you can. So three generations would be yourself and then it would be your parents. And then the tree would split because you have maternal and paternal side. And then you would have grandparents, which are the parents of your parents and then great grandparents. So that would represent three generations on both sides. So we were looking at a typical tree 
then we would be able to see generationally on both sides what got passed down. You would actually be able to see it in the tree and you would see through the descendants what they inherited. And I know somebody's probably already thinking, I'm gonna come out of here so I can see your face <laughs> and you can actually talk to me. Somebody's probably already thinking, well, well, how do you do this? How are you How are you able to gather this information about my family and you don't even know my family? That is where my gifts come in. Many of you might, know, might not know me and some of you may know me or know of me, um, but I do have an array of different spiritual gifts that allow me to literally go into a meditation on someone's behalf and actually abstract, extract this information with regards to their family, where they came from. I literally just sit for three days and the information is downloaded into my spirit. And I connect with ancestors, I connect with Holy Spirit, and they provide this information to me on a family. Um, I've done several of these emotional genealogy trees and they've been accurate. What I really, really focus my efforts on when people come to me, they generally are coming to me for what is called a soul reading. And so the soul reading is when I'm literally doing what I just mentioned to you. The person coming to me is coming to me because they have consistently experienced pain and trauma since childhood. And it is unresolved and it's unhealed. And they've grown sensitive to it and they no longer can live around it or carry it. So when they come to me, they're in dire straits for information regarding how can I heal my life? Why do I feel the way that I do? And so this information that I provide to them is really, really valuable because it validates, it provides confirmation, it gives them great insight as to their ancestry as it relates to emotional pain and trauma. And it also gives them life lessons that are associated with soul wounds, the soul wounds that I just mentioned to you that we all have because we have inherited this because of the generational curse that we have inherited from our ancestors unknowingly. I am going to, in a moment, you're gonna to get to see the list of generational curses because we hear this word all the time but at the end of the day, if you see the list and it really becomes more personal for you, just somebody saying generational curse, that really doesn't mean anything to be perfectly honest. But if you see the list, then you'll be able to say, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I see what my family has been carrying. And then you'll be able to start to think a little bit more deeply as to the impact that it has had on you and your your family. Um, I hate to put Claudia on the spot, but Claudia, <laughs> Claudia was a soul reading winner of mine. I do a contest every year and Claudia actually was a soul reading um, winner of mine. And and so Claudia, I don't know if, you, if you're comfortable, but could you just share a little bit about if you remember, because I know it was, it's been a minute, but just your experience with the soul reading, if you don't mind. My soul reading was um, nothing short of remarkable. And it really, since that, it was November of, I want to say 20, 20 or 21. I, a lot has changed for me because it brought a lot of things full circle. Um, to this day, I look, um, I'm more, much more in tune with your help, Deneen, with where I've come from and the kind of wounds that I've been carrying. Um, that I also, I'm seeking to to heal in this life. And one of the things that sticks out the most is my healing, my winning is their healing. Yes. Oh my yes. God. It gives me chills. I get chills and when you say that. <laughs> they want me 
to feel whole. They want me to feel joy. They want me to succeed. They want me to be happy and, 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 and they're rooting for me, my ancestors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We spoke about my, my father's grandmother and, you know, a lot of the things that, you know, the, the generations have been carrying and that I see in my life today. <laughs> yeah. It was just absolutely <laughs> jar. I mean, I, I was never really quite the same after that because it explained so much. But at the same time, in my yeah. prayers and my thoughts to today, years, fast forward, two or three years I, I talk to the, to my great, great grandmother. I talk to my spirit guides in a way that I didn't feel so connected to them before. And it was not that Deneen did it for me because it's really mine to do, but it, she opened that. She helped me see that for myself. And she helped me, I guess, find that connection where I really didn't feel it before or know it was there. But because of what she told me, how could I, it was undeniable. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, Thank you for sharing it. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about what I have presented to you thus far about the spiritual inheritance and the breakdown of different, sometimes people need more clarity around the family karma, um, the emotional genealogy. Is there any questions or is it is it pretty self-explanatory? Seems to be okay. All right, well, we'll dive back in then. Okay, so now we're gonna get into generational curse. We're gonna be talking about this which is actually the foundation of the course. Generational curse is the unresolved and unhealed emotional pain and trauma left behind by ancestors that is passed down through DNA to descendants. Similar to inherited traits and characteristics, they can and will manifest themselves differently and similarly in family members. No one is exempt from generational curses. They can show up in your parents, your grandparents, you, your siblings, your children, and extended family members. Before I introduce this list, I, I wanna share a, a study that was actually used on mice. And so the, the study introduced mint leaves. So they were introduced to the mice and they were actually given to them and they love mint leaves. So they ate the mint leaves and whatever else they liked to eat, some other pellets and things of that nature, but they really took a liking to the mint leaves for whatever reason. And so they started to have babies. And so they took the five of the adults and some of the babies and separated them, put them in a, a different uh, um, container. And they continued to introduce the, meat, the mint leaves to them. And then at one point in the study, these same mice started to receive electric shocks whenever they would go to eat the mint leaves. And they did this consistently until the mice no longer ate the mint leaves and only ate the pellets. Then they actually extracted a couple of those mice and also their babies and put them in another controlled setting. And they had babies and these babies were exposed to mint leaves and the babies wouldn't eat the mint leaves. They wouldn't go near them. I use this example because I think that it's really, really a good example of how the generational curses are passed down 
and how we adopt things unknowingly that we didn't even know was happening. We didn't know that our ancestors were exposed to certain things and now it has become a part of our DNA. Maybe we no longer like things or we don't take a liking to something and we never think twice about it. So I'm using that as the example, just for you to kind of say, hmm, maybe I adopted or maybe I got passed down something too. So here's the list I was talking about. So these are, now this is, an, this is not an exhaustive list, meaning you can continue to, you, if you think about your own family, which I'll have you do that, you'll probably arrive at a few of these and maybe there's some that's not even on the list. And I want you to know that that is possible. So there may be some things that you were, that you're aware of now that we're talking about curses, and now you can look at this as an example of what a curse could look like. There may be something else here. This list was created with regards to my extensive work in trauma, working with children and families in trauma as a social worker for over 25 years of my career. And I worked extensively with families. And so I started to actually journal throughout my career on, back then I wasn't calling them curses. It was really just instances and events um, and traumas that I saw consistently in families and they weren't related. So these are the curses that actually I have come in contact with in my career. We'll go back to slavery, but I do wanna actually just go down this list and talk to you a little bit about them. So the first one is abuse. Abuse could be physical, sexual, verbal. It could actually also be financial abuse. Then there's addiction. That could be drug, alcohol, abandonment. Abandonment could look like physical and or emotional abandonment with regards to a parent. Single parent household, that seemed to be very, very prevalent in the cases that I actually managed, where it generally was a mom who was taking care of four or five children or maybe two children on her own. And as I actually did more of a home study, I would quickly arrive that this was consistent in the family, that there was always a single parent in the family, and it was generally a mother to her children. Poverty is another one, and something that people might not even think about as a generational curse, to be honest. Um, just the, the, the notion of either homelessness or, or just lack, not having what is needed in a family is a curse. Incest, that's pretty much self-explanatory. It happens. And it was pretty excessive when I was doing my work, um, when children would reveal that they had been um, sexually abused. Usually it was someone in the family who actually had violated them. Illiteracy, that's another one that kind of goes under the radar. Most people don't think of illiteracy as a generational curse at all. Someone who can't read or write um, and it's going on, maybe it skips a couple generations, but maybe way back when, maybe there was a, a uncle or, you know, someone who actually never learned. You, you hear of, you know, people who never finished maybe the fifth grade um, back in the day and nobody really thinks anything of it. But then generations later through a descendant, then you see it again. Um, so that's definitely something else to look out for. Suicide is another one that people never think of as a generational curse. And if you sit back and you look at if this is prevalent in your family and you're able to trace back several generations as to possibly where it started, or maybe you're not able to go back that far, but maybe a few generations back, you know, of a cousin or a niece um, or someone, maybe even your sibling 
um, who struggles with suicide, more than likely it is a curse that um, is in your family. And um, if you were to do some research and actually be able to talk to someone who maybe has information about your family in general, you probably would arrive at that it's a curse, that it has occurred before. Racism is another curse um, that seems to go under the, ra the radar as well. Um, people don't really think of that as a curse, but it is. And I, I kind of connect it back to, um, to slavery, to be perfectly honest, the conditions of slavery and, and uh, the races being literally pitted against each other and how that can manifest in even today. Um, I have, you know, um, a lot of friends um, who are Caucasian and I've had conversations with them. Um, and some of them have told me that, you know, they've had people in their family who, um, you know, just hate not only, you know, people of color, but, you know, Jewish people just, you know, and they can't really say why. It's just, again, in the DNA, they don't know why they hate a certain culture. Um, and they've never really investigated. And then there are some, you know, people who I'm friends with who carry uh, guilt and shame, you know, and they're not racist, but again, it's in the DNA um, and you can't explain it, but the explanation is because it's a curse within your family. Illness, that could be cancer. I know we all more than likely probably have somebody in our family or know of somebody who has really, really dealt with this um, cancer and, and it's generational and it just continues to run rampant in families. Um, that's an example as well. It could be mental illness. That is a curse and that can be something that again is generationally passed down. Nobody really looks at it as a curse, but it is. Divorce is another one where people just don't stay married and it is repetitive. It happens all the time um, and, and it's overlooked as well. But if you look at, again, your family tree and if this is a curse uh, that you're familiar with, then more than likely you could probably look at the tree and pretty much pinpoint that this is a curse within your family. Incarceration is another one that, that tends to um, be missed and, and people don't think about. Um, I can recall, again, in my career, um, especially if the mother was a single parent, she would sometimes say that her, her mate or her husband was incarcerated and, um, and that other family members within that family also had been incarcerated, like their, their father uh, was incarcerated. And, and now her mate is incarcerated. So it's things like that um, that is shown and you can see. The last two are adoption and foster care, which also is considered a generational curse. And um, again, this is something that I saw a lot because the family system was just not solid enough. And the first recourse was to um, either put a child up for adoption because they could not care for the child or family services would come in, unfortunately, because the family home was not appropriate um, for the child to remain in. And so they were placed in care. And so when they're placed in care, that means foster care. And so that could go on again for generations. I can recall families that I've worked with where that was the norm, that just about everybody was in foster care. And when you look back, when you talked and did your, your case management in your home study, then you come to find out that this was a norm for this family, that the children were, were always in and out of foster care um, they had cousins in and out of foster care. This was just a way of life for these particular families. Um, what I would like to do, I'm going to put the list back up in a second. 
because what I want to do is actually give you um, the opportunity to actually just look at the list again and study it. And I want you to actually start to identify, um, if you're able to, the ones that actually have impacted your family. Um, and we will have the opportunity at the end of the hour um, to answer any questions you may have or to um, actually ask me anything that you would want answered with regards to your family or just a question in general. Um, we'll have time to do that. So I'll be putting the list back up in a minute so that you can take a minute to actually just digest the list and actually start to identify um, the ones that you have. And then what I'll ask you to do once you all are, are done, I just need you to put done in the, in the chat. And that way I'll know pretty much everybody is done looking at the list and you've had the opportunity to kind of look at it. Because then I, what I would like for you to do is actually tell me how many, how many, you don't have to tell me which ones, but I just want to know how many of them that you were able to identify for your family. But before I put the list back up, I just wanna stop and kind of pause and kind of give you the opportunity to ask me anything you wanna ask me about the curses or the definition about the curse or anything that I've talked about so far. I raised my hand and, for that reason. Pardon me? I raised my hand for that reason. Okay. Particularly. Um, I'm wondering about external forces like catastrophic events, floods, fires to homes, and even journeys of immigration that could separate families because yes. they all have a variety of unique impacts. Yes, for sure. So that's wonderful, Rick. Thank you for, for, for bringing that up. And like I was saying, the list is it can go on and on, but what you have just shared is definitely, you know, especially if you can see the consistent that it has happened, you know, it's not a random thing. So we're not looking for random, like, you know, it was just a one and done event, um, you know, but when you can think back or when you can actually, you know, you get information from uh, somebody in your family who actually has the family's history and they kind of tell you and you hear like, wait a minute, that's happened before, right? That's happened a couple of times, you know, then, then you start to kind of pick up like, okay, this is something more than just the random occurrence. This has happened in our family several times throughout our, our generations. And so, yes, that would definitely be something that you could add to your list and start to look into. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, you can unmute yourself, Erica. I was just wondering if you can't go too far back with your family many generations. Only I'm sorry, you, you went out a little bit. Oh, if you if someone can't go too far, well, I don't know my great grandparents. I don't know if that far back. Mm -hmm. I only just know about my grandparents, my parents, and me. So it's hard to trace further back what happened to people, but is that still full enough to be to, um, um, looking at what grandparents? Yeah. So, so basically, you're basically your question is you, you can only go back two generations. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Okay. So what I would say is you, you might want to, you know, en enlist my help. It all depends on, uh, it all depends on, you know, on you. If you, if you feel like you have enough, you know, information from what you know, um, then I would say use that. But usually you need at least three generations to kind of get a really clear picture of what has been going on in the family, what has been passed down on both sides. Um, is that the case on both sides of your family or just one side? Probably different curses on both sides. 
Yes, it would be. But what I'm saying is when yeah. you say you can only go back to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I talked to my cousins and my brothers were lost because war families all, all go back to Poland. Yes. Pretty much. And they. They wouldn't you have. Know, it I just because... don't have the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Okay, so then I would definitely recommend that you get the emotional genealogy that I was referencing earlier, because that would allow you that would allow you to literally get that inf missing information. And I have done that for people. I've done that for people who had less than what you have. I've been able to connect the dots for them. That would be immigration story that would sever a tree. And that's yes. why I thought the immigration stories should at some level add pertinence, perhaps yes. not knowing where you come from in some way. Yes. And I get that a lot with people who are adopted. They have no clue. They don't, they don't have any reference point at all. And sometimes they don't even know you know, they don't know birth parents' names. And not only that, but sometimes they don't know their birth name because it changed. And I'm still able to help them. So I would tell you, um, Erica, to, you know, if it's, if it's important to you, which more than likely it is because you want to know, you deserve to know what it is that, you know, you've inherited. Um, and especially if you have children, grandchildren, um, you could share the information with them um, to actually get the emotional genealogy chart done. So you could just go to the website and look around, go to my website, um, deninejoiner.com, and actually read about the genealogy that work that I do. And then that way you'll be able to decide if that's the route that you want to take. I'm hoping when I retire, digging because women have to get into records they don't hurt people in europe in this country that the mormons have done a lot of work about but my husband has been able to go back and i'm just you know, grandparents like erica the whole could family. you possibly have earbuds that are interfering with your audio uh, Thank you, Rick. Because I was about to say I, I'm having trouble understanding you. So. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's I much better. <laughs> my husband was able to go back so many generations using this genealogy um, software, and yes. he's been like digging around, and he got in touch with cousins that are like in their 90s that he didn't even know were alive. Or yes, it's so great for them and. You know, my parents fled, you know, war-torn war um, Europe, and they were just barely kids themselves. And, you yeah. know, I grew up without cousins and grandparents and everything and haven't had time in my life to really see what kind of databases they have for people in Europe or talk to my Polish cousins. What do they know? They probably know something too. I just haven't had time. Yeah, sure. But be interesting to know. And the other thing I was thinking too was just about everybody's got to have abandonment as oh, one no. of their curses, because when you look at the plague, it killed half of the people and all those kids had to get adopted by who knows who mm -hmm. because their families were all dead. So, I mean, there's got to be a ton of that. Yeah, you raise a good point. Yes, abandonment comes in all forms, for sure. Yes. Linda Spray has her hand raised. I'm ready. Okay. I, I would be probably just adding to that because I identify with what was just said. Thank you, um, whoever put the, the word immigration on there. Under that, I would say war, revolution, cultural shift and change uh, definitely resonates more with me than a lot of other things because I, I know you can have all the names of your ancestors, 
which someone in our family did. And on both sides, my family, you know, goes way back and came over here in the early 1600s on both sides. But because I'm the youngest grandchild on both sides, I didn't know any of those grandparents or anything. Uh, so I don't really have the emotional sense of the generational curse, except when I think about war and immigration, um, poverty, maybe that mm -hmm. came along with some of the trans transitions uh, uh, later, you know, uh, those kind of things. So I'd be real interested in what you do because it feels weird to like have a book with all their names and when they came over and, and then you don't have anything else. Said, no, nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. I appreciate you um, sharing that Linda, because it makes me think about um, a client of mine that I actually just met the other day. Um, and we, we weren't even really, you know, we weren't even talking about um, the work that I do just yet. But she was just sharing, you know, from her heart, um, some things. And then when she found out the work that I did, she became emotional because she said she really doesn't know who she is at the end of the day. Right. And that really just touched my heart. And I asked her to explain to me what she meant. And she said, well, I never knew my father. And even though my mom, even though my mom raised me, um, the story is that she was she was like very, very close to putting me up for adoption. And mm -hmm. my grandmother actually interceded um, and pretty much raised me. So she was, you know, really didn't have a relationship with her mother either. And her mother really doesn't talk to her, you know, on a deep emotional level. So she feels she feels like she she doesn't know who she is, rightly so. So when I explained the work that I do, she was just so emotional because she felt like now maybe I'll get some answers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you. Teresa Thank you. has a question. Yeah. Hi, Danae. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I can identify with about five of these. But I'd be interested in knowing, like, what do you do around the illness area? Like when you find when you when you know, because I can think of uh, an illness that just keeps coming down from generation to generation from who knows how many, at least mm -hmm. three or four. You know, mm -hmm. what do you do around the illness generate uh, generational yeah. curse? Well, it all depends on, you know, what it is. But I think you know, just the power of knowing and saying that, wait a minute, you know, this keeps happening. Um, you know, we need to get to the bottom of, you know, genetically what's going on here is, is it, you know, is it something that we are all predisposed to, you know, or is it skipping generations and why, and really just doing your own due diligence and trying to get the answer, you know, depending on what it is. You know, I have friends who, like I said, are, are dealing with cancer in the family. Um, uh, a friend in, in, in particular um, who actually is, is in the process of uh, getting genetically tested um, to make sure that she might not actually um, be a recipient of breast cancer because her mother passed over that. Her mother's two sisters died of the same. So it's in the gene, it's in the, it's in the gene pool, this cancer. Um, her mother had a mastectomy double and she still died. Um, and so now she's 22 and she's being checked out for it. So there are, you know, instances where it is very, um, you know, in your face that it's in the family, it's in the bloodline, um, you know, and depending on, like I said, what it is, there might be measures that you can take and those measures might be really just researching and, and, and looking into what it is, why it is, because most people won't do that. They really just accept it as, well, it's in our family. Hopefully I won't get it. Maybe, you know, take, take a, a proactive, you know, approach to whatever it is and see what you can find out about it and how you can possibly educate yourself so you can educate the rest of the family. 
so that they're in to know about this. So could it be like a trapped emotion? Could it be an emotional, an emotion oh, that, sure. you know, is that mm -hmm. what you look for? Is you look for like emotions that are trapped or somehow well, caught? It all depends, like what we're talking about. You know what I mean? Um, when I think of mental illness, you know, that would be definitely possibly something where there is an attra a trapped emotion and it's something that continues to happen over and over again, you know, throughout the generations. But as far as, you know, something like cancer, um, you know, or another debilitating type of, um, you know, illness, I, I really don't and can't really speak on it unless I know exactly what it is we're talking about. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Renate is next. After you, after, uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I found on two, three, four, five, six, at least okay. six, even more. Okay. But wow. one, one is a suicide. Okay. Um, I attempted to suicide. My mother was thinking of it, and I heard that an uncle of the family did suicide. And it, for me, the reason was fear, but not knowing what kind of fear. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is I'm German, and my mother is born at the beginning of the First World War, and I'm born at the beginning of the Second World War. Uh, and abuse, lots of abuse, mm -hmm. um, mental and physical, abandonment, divorce. If I don't know mental illness, uh, depression, fear, is, I think that's kind of uh, mental illness. Yes. Yeah, yeah, abuse. Res racism. But that's not so important. Incarceration, uh, our son went into uh, um, prison. And, oh no, I don't know who else. <laughs> Single parent household. My mother mm -hmm. and me partly. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did you have, did you have a, a question for Janine? Uh, yeah, actually, if I can have a, um, I think that needs some more, just like here, if I can contact you and have a reading or something like that. And I have no idea about my ancestors. My, my father looked like a South American, but otherwise yeah. we all seem to be North and Germans. Okay. So they can go to DaneenJoiner.com and find your contact information. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. So you and I can that. actually I can actually put my e email too um yes. in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So you don't cannot say anything to what I just said now. Well there's there's a lot definitely to unpack there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I really, you know, yes, I would I would really like to speak with you one on one if that's okay. Yeah. Um yeah, there's a there's some questions, of course, that are coming up for me, but because it's so yeah. sensitive, I would rather just respect your privacy and ask you the questions on your own, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. How do these okay. curses get started? Would you what? say, Rick? I, I don't like the word curse. It implies it's just like in the movies, putting a curse on you, but I understand it. How do they get started? Well, we're going to get into that in part two. Okay. Okay. And I'm with you with part the two. curse. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like the word curse. That's just the cultural word that is being used. I'm referring to it as spiritual inheritance. Just so you know, that's I, what I. Call I can it. understand that, but I'll yeah. be listening closely when you talk about the origin. Yes. Yes, that'll be part two for sure. Then Miss Sprague has her hand up. Okay. You're you're muted, Linda. I would oh, uh, put it in the chat. Um, I would add abortion or pregnancy and or pregnancy loss oh, yeah. to the yeah. list 
uh, pregnancy yes. losses runs in like uh, Western Ni uh, in Nigeria, high, high incidence of pregnancy loss of, you know, yes. having five, six pregnancies before a full term pregnancy. And then yes. abortion. I worked in abortion and that's how I started working with uh, trauma recovery. And I can't tell you how many people when they went to get an abortion, they found out their mother and their grandmother had both had uh, unfortunate pregnancy situations yes. that led to abortion. Barrenness yes. is actually That's an old one. testament curse of women. Yes. Yes. Oh, is all it? of these are yes. Yes, all okay. of these are good. You're exactly right. Yes, these are definitely you know ones and 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 ones where. Um, Maybe the child is actually stillborn. There's a lot of that, yeah, going on. They can't be carried to term. Right. Um, SIDS, sudden yes. infant death syndrome, is also another one that could be added to this list. Yeah. Um, Infertility issues. Yes. Infertility, right. Yes. Yes. All of these are 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 really good. I'm going to add them. Actually, thank you. For sure. I want to take a look at the the comments here in the chat and see i want to make sure i don't leave anybody out i actually mentioned in a comment in case anybody didn't have time that suicide is yes. not limited to a family unit or a dna it is the one thing that is able to be inherited through the social unit because it validate, validates the legitimacy of that option can you talk to me more about that? Can you? It, it has been statistically recognized that a suicide amongst a social group can raise the likelihood of suicide without having the same family background or the same uh, okay. uh, interesting. DNA. That's interesting. Yeah. I have a lot of intrigue by suicide and compassion. So mm -hmm. I pay attention to that. Now, if you don't mind me asking you this, because sure. you said you, you have you have the fascination. Do you know where that fascination comes from? Do you know is there anybody in your family that you know of that that actually committed suicide? No, but I do past life work. And I have am a spiritualist. I have discovered one of my own. Uh, I've discovered that suicide experiencers will find it easy to speak to me as opposed to other mediums. Okay. And I also have um, my own past life memory that was blocked for a long time that it turned out to be because of suicide. Okay. And that's what I was picking up on. To be, that's why I asked you that. Yeah, it's not so your genetic. Yeah, your fascination is is because of yeah a connection for sure. Mm -hmm. So you know, and and if anybody else has your fascination or your interests, your deep desire surrounding a subject matter, it might be similar to Rick, and maybe you can't explain it. You, Curiosity you is another that. thing to follow. For me, Curiosity is another thing yes. to follow. It can be more yes. important than following your bliss. That's right. That's right. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I'm using that as an example. Thank you so much because it goes deeper than that. Your your curiosity, your interest, you know, whatever it is about a subject matter or something, you know, uh, people usually just stop. They don't think about it. Like, why? You know, why is this on me so hard? Like, why do I, you know, um, I had somebody who uh, had guilt and shame on them so strong about Black people. And this was a, this was a Caucasian person that I knew of. And she relentlessly went and volunteered and did whatever she could for low-income communities. And it was just on her. And she didn't know why. She didn't know why. And our past crossed. And the more that we talked, come to find out that she had somebody in her family long ago, actually, that owned slaves. Um, and 
she was carrying that guilt and shame. And she felt like she actually owed a debt to black people. Now, not to say that she didn't have a genuine interest in caring and, you know, volunteering. But what I'm saying is it was over the top. When she told me about, she did more volunteering than she did work. That's how heavy it was on her, this guilt and shame. Like as if she did it, she couldn't explain it. But now since we've actually talked and unpacked this for her, now it's different. She still volunteers, but it's not the same. The guilt and shame is not there. She doesn't feel indebted to do it. She does it because she wants to, not because she had to. Let me look at the rest of these comments here. Yeah, somebody, okay, Rick, that was you. You were asking, would I include behavior or behavior patterns? For sure, as types of addiction, yes. Yes, I would. Okay. A lot of people are identifying curses. Five curses, four curses, six curses. Oh, this is really good too. Uh, Rick said, as a family genealogist, I would suggest learning about the city, the region, and nation of origin to understand what our ancestors survived before immigrating to a new homeland. It is intriguing to know what informed them in their belief. You're, ac you're absolutely right. Yes, being able to find out what, where the circumstances that they were living through definitely would lend and give you more information as to how you became emotionally for sure. Yes, really good. Bereavement and survivor's guilt would be introduced in some way. Yes. Yes. Three curses, five curses. So yeah. So I'm 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 happy to see that people were able to introduce um and, and identify, identify their, their curses. Um let me just ask you all this now that you've seen the list of curses. And the names that list of up them. Again? Pardon me. Oh, Can you put that you list, put the list back up. Yeah. Okay, sure. Give me one second. Thanks. Hold on. Excuse me, Denise. Yes. Could we add addiction to that one? It's there. Or, or does it go under it um, illness? Well, no, I mean, you can put it wherever you need to. But uh, uh, under the addiction, it would be drugs, alcohol. Oh, it could oh even I be see addiction. Okay, dot. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it could even, it, you know, it could even you know, addiction, it could even be pornography, believe it or not. So it's not limited to just drugs and alcohol, any form of addiction. It could be spending money, you know, gambling. That's mm -hmm. compulsive. <laughs> yes. So yes. I, I just didn't even see it when I looked at the list for some weird reason. So that's, well, that's why okay. I said, could addiction be added? And it's there. All <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I'll leave it up for another second and then we'll 
we'll come back so we can wrap up. As a Puerto Rican, I recognize the entire island is in the modern era the descendants of the rape culture because mm. of the colonizers and the indigenous people. I think rape might be another one to consider. Yes, yes, for sure. Yes. Do you guys need a few more seconds to look at the list or is it okay that I take it down? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I was going to ask, um, prior to seeing the list, if somebody would have asked you just randomly, about generational curses, would you would would you would have been able to actually just maybe give them a, a two or three things, or did the list actually help you to really kind of solidify like, oh, okay, that's what that's what they're talking about. Did that do mm -hmm. that for you, or did you kind of already know? List helps. Okay. I think you need a prompt to experience the emotional literacy to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Because you just don't go there until you're yeah. engaged. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I think I, I didn't necessarily think of it as um, curse, but I've identified the patterns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. repeated. But yes. what what I'm realizing today is I would really like to do what I can to protect my children. Mm. That's what this is about too, Diane, for sure. Yeah. A lot of people, that is their motivation, you know, um, is is really looking past themselves and saying, you know, I can't leave this on the table right? for my kids, my grandkids. Like, I, I refuse to do that. If there's something that I can do about it while I'm here, I'm going to do it. And, and then having those conversations, you know, with your family, you know, I think in my work, I always get kind of surprised sometimes when, you know, when I learn, which I'm, I really shouldn't be surprised, but when I learned that, you know, families aren't talking to each other, especially not like this. They're not, they're not talking about the difficult conversations. They're not talking about, you know, the pain, which is why we're pretty much all in pain because <laughs> nobody's talking about it and nobody, nobody showed us, nobody showed us how to emote nobody showed us you know any of that that just wasn't a part of the culture it wasn't part of family you just didn't do it That's you right. adopted what you saw two or three months ago i saw a meme saying that society and parents need to start teaching children emotional literacy and i was thinking oh who's going to mm -hmm. teach the men yeah because they don't yeah. have it right when right. does Sprague has her hand raised yeah, and you're right, Erica. If you don't have children, but you maybe you have nieces, right? So it's it's whoever, whoever is, you know, left left behind, whoever you're gonna leave behind, it's about them for sure. Yes, Linda. Linda? I was I was thinking of uh, Deneen with your gifts. I wonder if you might explore addiction a little further. Like one of the things I just wrote down just was like addiction. The curse is the need to escape pain because it's a strategy. It's not the it. You know, it didn't create, it didn't, it's mm -hmm. not creating something. It's a strategy that is inherited. Right. The curse is like deeper than the, than the strategy. So there's some need to escape something, some kind of pain. Yes. For sure. But For I think sure. you're going to get more yeah. on that. You're going to get more on that. Yeah. I just yeah. thought of another question. Um, do you pretty much stick with biological connection? So for instance, I, I have step parents mm -hmm. that, you know, were in my life for a pretty long time. Would there be the possibility that generational curse could come through a non-blood relative? 
Okay. Well, what I would say is because, you know, because you were around them, you grew up around them, then more than likely you, you were exposed and adopted some things from them. So it will be really interesting to see that. Like, you know, I typically, like I said, I typically have worked with, ju with just families, you know, generationally, but, you know, I'd be open for sure, you know, what I mean, to, see what, to see what comes through, um, you know, more than likely, um, your parents, of course, will be a part of the equation. But what I could do actually is focus efforts on your step parents as well, so that you could kind of see if you if you just you know were because you were around them, you know so much as well that you might have actually adopted some things from them. So that'd be interesting to see, you yeah. know. And as we're talking about, I'm just realizing my mother was adopted. Her biological father disappeared pretty much from her life when she was, you know, a toddler. And yes. she was adopted um, when she, I think she was eight. And that she really thought of that man as her father. And I thought of him as my grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting that, you know, there's some similarities uh, in terms of what happened with her, what happened with me. She was separated from her dad. I, I was separated from my dad, not because he disappeared, but just mm -hmm. by distance. And yeah. so my stepfather, you know, was more in my life for a certain period of time. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely think you should get, <laughs> get <laughs> something done. Cause that sounds like definitely like, you know, you could actually start to connect the dots and get some information. Hey, Teresa, you have. Have. You had your hand up? Yeah. Yeah, so I've been doing, uh, last couple of weeks, uh, work on muscle testing. Have you heard of that, Denise, muscle testing? Yes. And this, yes. you know, and, and what you're saying today is really similar to that. And maybe you even go a little bit deeper into more details into um the the ancestral work because because my mind's just going right now it's really <laughs> into this this ancestral thing so um so so you're you're allowing me to dig even deeper into this but it sounds I mean I don't know if you do muscle testing because you I'm sure you have a lot of I don't uh, <laughs> yeah, you 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 just you it just comes through to you more than likely yeah um, and it does. Uh, yeah well that's wonderful thank you I Thank appreciate you. the work you do. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Any I other have questions? a question about a weirdness. Um, my grandmother was orphaned at a young age, raised by ants, passed back and forth. And in spite of the fact that her biological father may have been around a little longer. She didn't even know the, her own mother's name. What type of, how do you classify that type of wounding? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Aband I mean, that's orphan. Abandonment. It, it's, def it's definitely abandonment for sure. Emotional and physical. We'll, we would start there for sure. Okay. From what you're, from what you're describing. Right. Um, and, you know, and, and with that, you know, there would come in which we're going to get into in part two, we're going to part talk about the DNA, how it's passed down. And then we're also going to start to look at your list. So while I'm thinking about it, hold on to your list, if you will, we'll, we'll need that for part two so that you don't have to recreate the wheel. Hold on to your list of curses because you're going to need that because then what we're going to do with it is start to identify your impact with these curses because you've been exposed to them in your family system. So we're going to start to end, we're going to start to identify your soul wounds. And remember your soul wounds is because you've been exposed to this in your family and everybody has their own soul wounds, even though they might be similar to your sibling, more than likely they're still different because you experience things different. When I talk to, I'm daughter number seven in my family, all girls. When I talk to my older sisters and I ask them about their relationship with my father who abandoned me, 
their relationship with him is totally different. So the wounds are not the same with them. They didn't know what I'm talking about when I say, you know, did you miss daddy? Did you, did you know this about, they, they have no clue. For them, at least for my siblings, like they had the perfect childhood. And I, every time they say that, like I almost want to drop off my chair. I'm like, what are you talking about? You, your childhood was fine. You kidding me? You know, but I'm the baby. And that's when all hell broke loose is when I came around. So <laughs> my experience is, is not the same as theirs. That's for sure. You were the change of like life, we were, baby. We were, it, it feels like I was born in two different families when I hear them speak about my parents and, and you know, in their whole existence. And then they hear mine and they're like, really? That's how you feel? That's how you... Yeah. So, yeah. So this will be interesting. So definitely keep your, you know, keep your notes. Um, and, and before we close, I just want to just ask it as well, you know, when, when we were going through the list, we were talking about generational curses. Um, did you have any feelings in your body? Was there any, 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 usually for me, like, when I know that I've been holding on to something and somebody just unlocks something, my stomach goes crazy. Uh, maybe you were getting pains in your head or your body just started aching all of a sudden, or you got chills, uh, or you got distracted. Maybe you checked out and didn't really realize you checked out. Did any anybody have any visceral things going on? Just curious. Did you want to share? I'm going to put my, my email in that in, in the chat here. Did anybody notice anything? I want to ask you something astrological. Um, I can't help but be in a position through the years of getting lots of questions from all around. What's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. And as we know, uh, about 05, 06, Lada and I started writing about all this stuff that has come to fruition now, and now it seems like we're just come from. We saw it coming. It's it's in the planets. Do you find it uncanny that as we feel like the closer we're getting to the edge, that the more we're talking about trauma, uprooting trauma, getting past it? Getting divorced from it? Getting free from it? You said, do I find it interesting that we're... Do you find a connection? I know Linda Sprague is shaking her head. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You find a connection between all this end of the world talk and mm -hmm. all of a sudden everybody wants to oh, yeah. get, and get rid of their drama. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Because we're, we're all collectively going through this transformation, this you know, this soul transformation. And, you know, when I talked to you the other day, you told me a part of the culprit is Iris. She's not, she's not, she's taking prisoners. She don't care. You're going to face it. He doesn't. You're, you're, you're going to face it. Yeah, you're going to deal with it. That's and so that is what is going on for everybody. The sensitivity to the burden you've been carrying. You can't ignore it anymore. Well, I think another thing you see, uh, if you do a lot of clients, people are more willing now to accept responsibility oh, yeah, for the problem for sure. in themselves into. Secondly, they're still not ready to give up being a victim. Okay. Yeah. They're going to hang on to that <laughs> to the end of the world. Okay. You're but right. There is a, I, I think you even see it with divorce. There's so many people getting divorced after one or two years. Three years. Yeah. yeah. You're you're yeah. seeing people are giving more honor to solving my problem. I got to solve mm -hmm. my problem. My mm -hmm. generation solved the problem of getting loose from our parents. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be like our parents. We can be separate. So we accomplished that. Yeah. Now it's come down to really it's existential. Mm -hmm. Well, what am I doing here? Why did I come here? How did mm -hmm. I do that? And I right. think your trauma work 
is a predecessor to um, trauma work on the collective too. Yes. Yeah. That's sure. like what Claudia said, that she experienced like the ancestors that when we do any kind of uh -huh. healing, we're healing the ancestors as well. We are. Yes. And yeah. so we have to heal them in order to, for humanity to go forward. That's right. That's I right. think one of my most powerful prayers recently was for someone who was in deep difficulty and trauma. And I lit a candle to bring the divine forward and spoke blessings through the ancestors of a thousand generations to send love mm -hmm. and support and yes. guardians and blessings yes. and healing. Yes. And I was terrified prior to that moment of prayer. And after I had released that prayer, it did something within me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I never bet. even thought to ask for me. Right. We, we are experiencing a very special moment. And I'll tell you why with five minutes left. And I'll take two of the minutes away from the need. Lars and I were talking about this last night, how Deneen has done something remarkable, okay? When we wrote this book, this book is no happenstance. This book is a treatise on the sign of Pisces in that the whole soul evolves to the final state of Pisces where the self becomes selfless. And the point I'm getting to is... <clears throat> It's no coincidence that Danine is a Pisces. And Danine came to me years ago through another friend, 10 years ago, and we met each other. No mm -hmm. big deal. Hey, how are you doing? And then in the last couple of years, as she's come on to this show, she came to me recently, to me and Liza, about a year ago, and oh. said, something wants me to go to Houston. And I saw Nip. Neptune sitting right on her ascendant. Well, Neptune only gets her every 186 years. <laughs> the ruling sign of Pisces. And when it's there, it whispers direction. And you follow the direction or you get kind of like sent out into space. Yeah. And she did it. She did it. And she called during the first few months when she got to Houston and said, hey, where the hell are you right now? I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> we had to reassure and say, you're on the right track. And yes. She, she did. So I'm here to affirm what she did. She did it planetarily also. And my point is she listened to the Holy Spirit. I don't know what words to use here. You got your own. But she is a product of somebody who really listened. She's been through the trauma. She's really a number one ready to get out there and teach about trauma because the time is here now. But she's yes. really to be commended greatly for her Thank great you. success already in Houston, even though she has not launched her program yet. We're mm -hmm. kind of like her guinea pigs for that program. Yes. Does that make yes. any sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, we're about to wrap up here. I just want to say thank you so much for your time and attention and your engagement and, you know, your questions and the things that you have added to our generational curse list, I'm definitely going to enhance that. So when we meet again on the 30th, they'll be added. Um, I placed my uh, email in the in the uh, chat as well as my website. Um, either place you can, you know, readily get in touch with me. Uh, you can bother Rick if you want to, and if if for some reason. Those don't work. He knows how to get in touch with me directly as well. So yeah, we'll st um, we'll stay in touch. Remember everybody. Hi Marty, just came through. <laughs> well, uh, remember everybody. We're going to be. I'll be. I'll be on next week, and we're going to be back with Denine in two weeks. And yes. I'm going to be putting out the list for the holiday exceptions and all that. But remember, all 
Astrology Unplugs from now on will start at 7 o'clock. 7 yeah. o'clock Eastern. So we yeah. love y'all. Thank you yeah. so much for coming and thank helping you. us, Danine. You were wonderful. Oh, thank you very much. It. And thank it really you. hit the chord. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, you're next so week. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving next week. <laughs> Thanksgiving next, next week. Next week we're skipping. Oh, okay. <laughs> you said we'll see you next week. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> we're going to skip. I want to eat turkey. Okay. Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we'll be back at two weeks. Okay. At seven o'clock Thursday with Denine in part two. Good night, okay. everybody. Yay. Save the recording. Marty, Thanksgiving. Marty, come see us next time. Thank you so save much. Save the recording. I'm yep. going to save the recording. <laughs> really? It's